resume recording. So if we enter a collab, um, okay, so it will have this uh, type of uh, um, introductory page and what is collaboratories and uh, um, and such, okay. So if you have a Google account uh, with valid cell phone number in the United States, um, you should be able to use the free resources in uh, Google Colab. So for example, this, this is uh, what the interface is like. Um, it's, it's very much like a, uh, if you have used Google Drive, you know, Google Sheets, Google Docs, it has pretty much the same with Google Doc, Google Sheets, and uh, those kind of thing. So, for example, you have tools, and but it's uh, it's more like a, a more programming oriented. And here is a table of contents. So, for example, this is uh, this is our um, coding lecture one. So, uh, and I'll introduce the interface uh, in a moment. Okay. So first, we have two kinds of a cells. So this is like a cell programming. So each cell is like an environment within itself. So for example, if I hover my mouse right on the boundary of a cell, you can see two things, for example, code or text. If I click add a code, okay, you can, of course, use keyboard shortcut here. I just want to demonstrate some uh, uh, GUI, this graphical user interface usage. Um, then this is a, this is a code cell. We can enter Python code, for example, I want to print. So as we can see, we have all these helps. Okay. By the way, this is Python 3. So um, so we, we, our print function is a bit different. So for example, I want to print, um, welcome to math 450. Um, okay. And I hit shift and enter this code will run. Or you can, you can hit this button right here. Okay. For example, I can add some more. So let's print. So if we have uh, some F string, so here, so let's introduce some F string. Uh, by the way, I forgot to ask. Um, um, okay, but let me let me make uh, let me make the um, let me make the font bigger. Editor. Let's see. Okay. Uh, let me still make even bigger. Oh, why it doesn't save? Okay. Okay. Um, let me still try to magnify a bit. Okay. So, and let's try some F string. So F string is we, uh, we add an F in front of a string. So what we have here is, uh, uh, then we can use a parentheses to put some variable here. So for example, uh, if, uh, We say from time, input time, okay. And we can print time uh, right now, okay? And let's run. So for example, this is uh, like the absolute time right now. And for the F string, we can 
uh, we can like uh, um, specify a format is we use uh, a column. So we use column. If we put a dot uh, to F, it means uh, we just keep two significant digits for a floating number. So if we run the cell, we'll see only two decimals were left. So this is, whoop, sorry. I put it outside of the parentheses. As you can see, when it's a string, it's literally got printed. I have to put inside here, okay? So we have only like two decimals left. So this is an F string. And uh, um, in our class this semester, this package is what uh, we're dealing with. So it says the torch package contains data structures, blah, blah. Um, the main thing is it has a CUDA counterpart that enables you to run Tensor on an NVIDIA GPU with compute compatibility greater than 3.0, which we want to demonstrate today. Okay. So basically, um, if we want to use GPU to help us to compute, um, you know, machine learning applications, uh, we can either buy one, uh, but uh, some of them are really expensive. Like for example, if uh, you buy one of those, um, for example, this guy, this A4000, I think it's literally 4,000 bucks and, uh, and, it, and it eats lots of power. So, uh, it may not be worth it. I mean, so the best one is to use the free GPU resources online. I mean, the best one are the uh, Kaggle and Collab. Okay, both owned by Google. So we'll use final project. Uh, so our final project will be done on Kaggle and uh, uh, our coding lecture. So uh, as a demo, uh, I will use, um, I will use this. Okay, um, I will use this collab. And uh, uh, it does have some time limit. Uh, for example, it's 12 hours on collab and nine hours on Kaggle. So you cannot run your code, let's say more than nine hours, but then don't underestimate this nine hours. Actually, uh, if we run this code on powerful, these powerful cloud GPU, even for one hour, we can we can train a very, very nice and a very big model. Um, so here, so Kaggle uses a more adaptive resources allocation. Um, you sometimes you may, uh, I'm sorry, collab. So um, sometimes you may not get uh, the resources you want if you run your instance for an extended of time. Okay. Um, so here I want to do a recommendation is uh, if you are serious into machine learning and you want to get one, I highly recommend this GPU right here. It's uh, it's a GPU, I think it's RTX. So um, uh, I highly recommend this GPU. So if you are serious into machine learning, I highly recommend getting one. Uh, 360 so it's uh and uh, it has um, lots of RAM at your disposal so if you are interested in computer vision or natural language processing so I highly recommend so part of my English I think this should be an article um, I highly recommend this GPU right here so 3090 so its price is I mean, it's incredibly nice. It's only uh, 1500 bucks, I think. But um, I mean, two years ago, the same GPU uh, from NVIDIA is sold at uh, like uh, 1400, like 4000 bucks. So it's, it's a great band of the buck. Um, and it's extremely worth it if you're interested in doing computer vision or natural language processing modeling. So it's like, uh, so this is the cheapest and the best GPU on the market that can do these two things, okay? And now, so once we import Torch, let's check Torch version. So this normally is the latest version done um, on Google, okay? 
So we see here uh, 1.7 and it has a CU here. CU just means CUDA. Okay. So CU means CUDA. And uh, um, so if we add a cell here, um, let's check. So torch CUDA. Okay, so here we go. And all these are uh, menu. So for example, CU, if you see CU in front, it means CUDA. And this is uh, this is more like a Visual Studio interface. So CUDA uh, is available. So if I run this cell, um, Google will tell me it's not available. So, and I'll teach you guys. So as we can see, it's if it's false, it's not available. Um, so I'll teach you guys how to uh, enable it. So just click tools right here. Um, oh, sorry, runtime, and click this change uh, runtime type. And here we see um, that the menu said uh, uh, hardware accelerator, and we just choose GPU. So um, we save, and as we can see that it's allocating the resources. Uh, it's connecting. Initializing means we are good. So if we click, we'll see that the active session, which is this one, is running on GPU. Okay. Um, oops. So for example, uh, if we hover our mouse here, we can see some resources available for us to use. Um, now let's, so since, uh, since this one, has restarted. Let's run this to code again. So we have run this out. And now let's uh, check if Torch's version is the same. So as we can see, it's the same. And now let's check this one. So it will tell us, okay, GPU is available for us to use. Um, and here, if you are into uh, if you are into Linux, um, in a code cell, if you hit this exclamation mark, um, you can use command line command. For example, the ls is check um, what files in the current directory. So, for example, it's uh, it has this sample data, and uh, now I'm gonna use Nvidia. So, for example. Uh, this is a command to, to check what currently GPU we have. So, um, so now we can see currently we have a Tesla T4 and it's capped at uh, um, 70 watt and most likely it has a 16 gigs of RAM. So uh, it's pretty powerful. Okay. Um, and next is so I don't assume all of you guys know NumPy. Um, like, uh, for example, for example, look right here. So let's, uh, uh, so let's first check NumPy's version. Um, I'm not sure which version it is, but let's see. Okay, it's, uh, uh, it's 1.9. 1.19, so it's okay. And if we run this cell, um, X will be in um, our memory. Okay. So what happens here is, um, what happens here is, we can see. Did I run? Oh, I run. Okay. So if we add code, um. And we can do various things with X, for example. Um, so here in our class, the recommended way of operating on vector is using the object oriented one. So for example, if we hit a DIR and we check X uh, and we run this, uh, we will retrieve all the methods associated with a variable. So for example, um, we can do numpy sum of x, okay? So if we hit run, uh, basically this is plus, so x is from, um, 
Mix is from one one to one to nine, I think. But uh um so uh let's print X. Okay, so X is from uh zero, one and to nine. So the sum of X is then uh forty five. And what I recommend whoops. Oh, sorry about that. Let me let me just uh um let me just real quick. My bad. Um, so a recommended way is we use the object oriented programming. Uh, so we have X sum. Okay. If we don't put anything, it returns a sum. Okay. So and similarly, we can have something like torch. So here, let me change it to range. So if we invoke this torch tensor, so we have imported torch and um, the collab will, will like, uh, will have this help uh, right here. So, and the input right here, the data can be any list like object. So for example, we can have a, a list. Uh, like one, two, five, and that's right. So as we can see, it returns a torch tensor of one, two, five. And uh, for example, we can also use range. Um, if we use range and let's print what is XT, we'll get uh, exactly the same as our NumPy array, but instead we have a torch tensor, okay? And the torch tensor, you know, um, and all the operations are the same, are almost the same with, um, with NumPy. So for example, um, XT, we can do some. Um, so for example, it returns a 45, but it's a, it's a tensor. And let me delete this cell. Um, So the other way is uh, if we have a, a torch tensor, um, I'm sorry, if we have a NumPy array, we can always convert it to a torch tensor. So for example, if we do torch tensor uh, X, so X is a NumPy array, C keep this in mind. So as we can see right here, so when we put X here um, and Google tells me, Colab tells me it's an ND array. So if we run this, it returns a torch tensor, okay? Um, and if I want to convert, I want to convert like a back. So for example, I wanna convert uh, a torch tensor to a NumPy array. Uh, we can do something like XT, uh, we simply do NumPy, so as we can see here, and uh, if we print, if we print uh, the type of uh, XMP, so we'll get uh, essentially NumPy and the array. So um, as we can see here, it's a it's an it's an ND array from NumPy. So what's next is, uh, um, so common methods function associated with them. So we have some, um, 
And for example, so for um, how to imp implement our ReLU function is for NumPy. So for example, X, we have a function called a clip. Um, okay. So for example, if we put a clip min equals five, let's see what happens. So originally, originally our array was zero, one, two, three, four, five, right? If we run this clip like uh, for X, then what happens is uh, um, everything that's less than five got clipped. So it equals five. So similarly, let's try to be, uh, for example, let me show another thing. So now if we want to input, uh, uh, implement our ReLU function. So for example, if I have minus 0.3, minus 0.1 and 2 and 4 and if we do clip min equals 0 let's see what happens so as we can see the less than 0 part got clipped okay so the same thing so for a pytorch for pytorch um we have something um similar but uh, it's called a clamp, okay? Uh, so X key, we have a clamp, okay? And we just hit zero. So for example, you can put mean equals zero here as well. Um, so let's run it. Because XT has all entry greater than or equal to zero, so uh, this clip doesn't, you know, change everything. However, next uh, we want to introduce some some more. So, um, so for the tensor, we have many like uh, operations. For example, the first one is add. We can put add here. So if we want to add, you can add any admissible object so for example uh we can add a five um so as we can see every entry got added five we can minus five um so as we can see every entry got uh minus five uh, for example the original um six entry which is five uh, becomes zero and now if we do this clamp min equal zero, uh, then it becomes first we add minus five and then we apply the ReLU function. So, uh, so as we can see everything that is less than zero becomes zero, all right? So in the next, I want to introduce is uh, uh, is right here, so um, is right here. So PyTorch actually has this special, uh, this special uh, underscore methods. Um, oh, page on responsive. Um, Okay, my bad. Yeah, my laptop is kind of slow. So let me, um, let me close this. Close all tabs. Exit pages, reload. Um, 
So let's import um, this guy again. And uh, let's run this. I think I only need to run the act torch. So in case we want to demonstrate. Okay, so we're here. Um, so the next thing I want to introduce is uh, add. But with an underscore. So for example, for the underscore function, when we do xt, when we add one and we print xt, okay, xt won't be changed. So for example, this will return this will return the first one will return every entry at added by one okay and uh, um, the second one if we print the XT again it's still XT itself all right so XT hasn't been changed much however there is another method called add underscore. So right here. So if we add one, all right. So uh, we hit, we can see, um, you know, we get to this XT, add this one, but now we print XT again. XT becomes this array so we can tell the difference that is when we apply the add function without this underscore it's just to add this xt but without changing xt um, if we use this underscore xt will get replaced so this is also commonly used in uh, implementation of uh, um, neural network so this is called in place uh, operations. My bad. Operations. All right. Okay. So next, in next part of today's class, we're gonna learn uh, how a neural network is implemented. So here is the diagram of uh, uh, a single neuron, or say perceptron, in a multi-layer perceptron neural network. So for example, we have input and got to multiply it with the weight. So the superscript L means out layer. And we have this linear combination and then we plus the bias and go through the active nonlinear activation function and we get the output. Okay. So, um, and if we write, you know, um, the output it looks like that um so and for multi-layer so uh, here we have a simple multi-layer uh, neural network so for example in layer two uh the first neuron accepts inputs from this guy this guy and i put an extra plus one here uh, because if we have bias okay so if we have bias, we can think this bias is multiplied with one as if the input is one. Okay. So that's also a common representation uh, of bias is treating bias as an input of one. And then this perceptron will say this neuron will accept inputs from here, here, and here. And similarly here, uh, from here, here, and here. And then we proceed to next layer. It accepts input from here, 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 and here, okay? And lastly, uh, after this Z being put through an activation function, we get our output. So, and we'll uh, learn the, um, the operation. So for example, and this is what we have done in class, but with a slightly more um, more detailed notations. So for example, uh, we have, this is uh, um, layer one, layer one. Uh, this, is, this means layer one, layer one, and layer one. 
and uh, if we look up this um, let me put this smaller so this perceptron will accept input from here here and here so it's essentially the weight times uh, the first layer's input and the weight times the first layer's input and we put a2 which is f and which is a2 is here so a2 is here and a2 is a linear combination of this which is x1 so we treat this as an input layer and this is x2 so uh, it's x2 times the weight in this error and uh, and then we plus a bias um, we get a2 and finally uh, we we use a3 and this input which is a1 uh, of with superscript three which is right here okay so which is the nonlinear activation function applied on this z1 with the superscript three so for z1 z1 is a linear combination of the input from the second layer which is this guy this guy and this guy and what do we have here is um the superscript means the weight associated with a layer. So in the class, we use the simplest, like one hidden layer. So I didn't use the superscript, but we can use this superscript to represent layer if we have uh, like uh, many layers. So, and then this is uh, the output, which is y hat, y hat, is an approximation. So we hope it's an approximation of the true y. Next is from this, we represented in to a vector notation. So which we go through um, how to represent in class. And lastly, basically we just rewrite this inner product using the actual inner product. Um, and same thing happens here. So then we can even simplify this notation. So imagine, so A1, A2, A3, this is a column vector, okay? And B1, B2, B3 is another column vector. And this block, okay? So this block is a matrix vector multiplication. So as we can see, this uh, A superscript L is the L layer's output. So we multiply with all these weight vectors. It is as if we multiply with a big matrix. So this is the first row. Okay, so first row. And multiply with the first column, which is uh, this AL. And this is the second row multiply with AL, which is a column vector. And this is a third row, which is our weight matrix, multiply with the column vector, okay? So then next we can see this is our uh, matrix vector multiplication. So for example, Z2, which is a vector representing our second layer. So right here, before applying the activation function. So our Z is here. Um, so is this weight matrix times the input plus this bias vector. So we have Z. And then we have uh, this F function, which is our activation function um, applied on this Z and we get A2, okay? And similarly, in the second layer, we have, um, so I think I don't need uh, this activation function in the final layer. Um, let me delete this. Um,
Okay, so I'll change this later. But uh, the key is, so somehow I uh, changed the wrong part. Um, so um, I want to say it, this F is not necessary for the last layer. Um, but we can we can see it's essentially is a linear combination composed with a nonlinear function. So this is a seemingly difficult to understand neural network, but it has a very very simple linear algebraic representation. Okay, and next is we'll learn how to implement a neural network. I mean, using NumPy and PyTorch. So as we can see, we have a key, uh, several like key operations. For example, uh, we need this element-wise fashioned um, whatever this f nonlinear activation function is, and we need this matrix multiplied with this vector. And sometimes, if we want to implement this. We want to use uh, this dot product. So let's review uh, what NumPy does. So first one is inner product. So what NumPy does inner product is um, there is a unification of NumPy inner product uh, with matrix vector multiplication. So um, so let's consider a matrix. Okay. So for example, uh, let's assume A is one, zero, and two, three. So this is a two by two matrix. So it's one, zero, two, three. Um, so let's add a code below. And then let's say B is uh, another vector. Um, Let's use X. So X is another actor um, called NumPy array. And let's say uh, it's, uh, um, it's two minus one. All right. And let's print the X. So what happens is if we want to compute uh, a times x. So first, let me um, let me add a comment. So a times x is not the correct way to implement uh, matrix vector multiplication because if we use time vector, it is um, element-wise multiplication. What we want to do is we can use, again, we can use this uh, object-oriented uh, function. So for example, if we want to do matrix vector multiplication, we can simply invoke dot. Let's try if it go through. So as we can see here, we get a vector of two and one. This is uh, uh, this is uh, this is a times x. Okay. So this is a matrix vector multiplication. Uh, as we can see here, the first row times this is treated like a column vector. So we get the first entry is two, and two three times two minus one. We have this is four, and this is minus three. And that's why we get one. So, and PyTorch has e almost exactly the same thing. So for example, if we have, if we just name our vector um, 80, which is a PyTorch tensor of A. So we can do torch tensor um, A and uh, uh, XT is torch tensor um, B, sorry, X. 
and we print a t and x t so we run this cell we have as we can see um let me add a new line here so as we can see here a becomes a torch tensor and x become the torch tensor as well and torch has something exactly like the matrix vector multiplication which is called um mm which is uh, matrix multiplication so if we do at m m okay then we put x t here and if we click wrong we'll get uh okay math 2 must be a matrix my bad so okay so here is uh how um so here's um i made an error so apparently um it's because the reason why this torch won't go through is uh um is this x is a is a is a vector it's not uh so for example it's size two but this is size two two so what happens is we have to make this even though in the numpy it goes through but in the torch it doesn't go is because uh uh let me add so xt has to be a tensor of size to one okay so what we can do is you can either search stack overflow um so i recommend you doing that but uh the simplest way is we do reshape so we reshape it into something like this so the reshape minus one one trick is also often used and let's add a code cell above let's see what it becomes so it becomes the two by one tensor if we consider its size like that. so it becomes two one okay so the minus one means we don't specify the first dimension and uh, um so minus one means uh, that we do not specify that dimension so if we have for example if xt has nine entries um if we do this then uh we'll get a nine by one vector okay so now let's try this again so now we go through and uh we get a two by one uh, vector. I'm sorry, torch tensor. All right. So next I want to demonstrate is uh, element wise operation. So for example, so how to imp implement the ReLU function. So I think I have demonstrated uh, earlier is we use clamp. So for example, we have, um, let's try um x let's try yt equals we can generate a normally distributed random number using a function called rand n okay um so um this is standard normal random number so for example we want to generate um a five by two and we print yt so we'll have uh we'll have let's do two by five so we'll have a something like this apparently um and some of some of them so probably half of them are negative number uh, like i said earlier so if we want to do relu relu is essentially everything is less than zero becomes zero so we can do yt clamp okay 
So this is element-wise operation. The other one is we use logical indexing. So for example, in NumPy, okay. So let's do y equals yt NumPy. So let's print y. Okay. Um, the other is using logical indexing. The logical indexing is very powerful. So first we generate a Boolean array by the following. So for example, if we check y is greater than zero, we'll get a matrix that tells us whether this condition is true or not. For example, the first entry uh, is negative, so it's false. Second one, it's false. Third one, it's false. This one is greater than zero, so the matrix, the entry here is true, okay? So what happens is we can use this Boolean array as indexing. So Boolean array as indices. So for example, if we want to retrieve all the entries that y is less than zero, then we can something do do something like this and we print y again. So let me read this code for you guys. First, we retrieve the entry that is less than or equal to zero. Then we set such condition happens, the entries to be zero. So first, y less than or equal to zero is getting indices of y such that its entry is less than or equal to zero. So then we set these entries to be zero. So this is another way of implementing the ReLU function. So let's try it. So as we can see, everything that is less than zero here, 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 and here got set to be zero, okay? So uh, that's it for today. So I don't think I don't think I have time to go through the final remark. Um, so I may put it in the first coding homework, which will be available later today. Um, and this notebook, will, I will also export this notebook, and uh, you guys can uh, refer it. Okay. Um, so for the homework, you can either submit using the notebook or you can submit in the Python file. So I'll stop recording and see you guys next week.